guys, welcome back. This is Deepesh from Freshersworld.com. So in the last class, we have seen how to create a Java class with the name iPhone. So we have created an iPhone class. So in the last class, we haven't seen how to run this iPhone class. So in Java, we have a method, something known as a main method. So without a main method, your Java programs won't work. So now you need to have one main method at least. If you have created multiple classes, you need to have one main method to make sure your program runs. So now I'll try to create one class you know, which will start my iPhone. So I'll try to create a new class, which will have my main method. So I'll try to create start, start class. So now I can, you know, select an option, you know, something like void main, void creating the class itself. So I'll not try to do that. I'll just try to create a simple Java class that will start my iPhone. So now what will happen, right? If I try to you know, inherit a method, something known as main. So what I'll try to do, I'll try to add a method main. So I'll try to press MA and control space. So you get an options, you know, you get an options, you get suggestions from the tool, you know, main method, right? So now I have got this main method. So now if I try to run my program, my program would get executed. So now what I have to do, I have to start my iPhone class and I have to call a method ring. So now I have to initialize the iPhone class. So what is initialization, right? Now I have an iPhone class. Now I have a start class. Now whenever I do main, a memory gets created for the start class. Now I have to make sure my iPhone also has some memory to get executed on the system, right? So now I have to create a space for my iPhone class. Now my iPhone class get should be executed. Now whenever I do start and I have a main method, this class will easily get executed. So the Java will be looking at which class has this main method and the execution starts there. So now I have an iPhone class. I have to make sure some space is allocated in the memory for an iPhone class in order to make sure, you know, my iPhone rings, right? We have written a method a ring. So that is nothing but an action. So if an object can perform some action, write it as a method, very simple. So now I have to create a memory for this. I'll try to write I capital I and control space iPhone, you can see the suggestions, right? iPhone, you write iPhone phone is equal to, you know, I try to make this small letter iPhone is equal to new, right? New is a keyword which helps us to create memory for the class that we have written. So now if you have 10 different classes like iPhone, a Samsung phone. So need to create an object. So what I mean by an object, you know, you are trying to allocate some memory for these classes so that when you try to run, so these gets executed, right? So we are trying to create a memory for it. Okay, so I have created a memory, right? Now using this reference, so now I'll try to take my paint and I'll try to explain you guys what is exactly that this syntax would be doing. So I'll try to go to my paint. Yeah, I have my paint here, right? So now what I'm doing is I'll try to create some memory and you know, I assume this is my memory. So this is my memory, right? I try to create some space over here, right? I'll try to create some space over here. So I'll try to give some space for my iPhone. So whenever I try to write a keyword, something known as new, right? I, whenever I try to create a new word with the name new, what happens in my memory a space gets allocated. So now what happens is I, I have a method in my iPhone class coming back here. I have a start method. So what happens in the memory is I'll be having a space for my ring method as well. So I have some space here. So what I have to do now I have, so now I have this space. So now I have got this space in my memory. Now I need to execute it. So I need to call this ring. So I'll try to create a reference for this. So, you know, I'll try to create a reference with the variable name, what we have given, you know, in the start we have given phone. So that is what I try to do, right? I try to put phone. So now this memory object is accessed using a variable phone. So now using phone, I want to access phone class and in the phone class, I want to access ring method. So how do I do it? So now in order to access, I have this variable, right? I have this variable that can access to the 
memory. So what I try to do, I need to call this method. So what I try to do in Java is phone, okay, phone object, right? In order to access any methods in Java, you need to use dot operator. So the dot operator is used in order to access the method using the class reference. So I have the reference, so dot ring. Fine. So now very simple what we have done is using a new keyword which allocates a memory for our class and in that class as we see here we have only one method that is ring and the memory would get allocated for the ring. Now if I want to call this method so if I want to call this method so what I have to do I have to keep a reference phone and using phone I have to call the ring method. So in order to call a method in Java we use dot operator. In order to create memory for the class, we use new operator. Very simple, right? So now I try to run my program. So let us see the output. Where is the output? Yeah. Now output is here. You know, phone is ringing. Yeah, my iPhone started ringing. So what I have done, I have created the memory for the phone class, the iPhone class, and I'm trying to access the method using the dot operator. So now in this concept, we have to understand two, two things. You know, a class will be containing many methods. Now a class can contain some variables as well. So now I'll try to make some changes here. So I'll try to declare a string, string, right? I'll try to declare a string with the phone name, phone name has iPhone 7. Okay, spelling mistake, iPhone 7, right? So whenever you write a string variable, you have to make sure that will end with a semicolon. So all the statements, either it should be ending with a semicolon or it would be having an open curly braces or a closing curly braces. So what I'll try to do, I'll try to assign this iPhone name. Oh, again, I have a spelling mistake. Please don't mind. Right. So now what I'm trying to do is what happens. So what I'm trying to do is whenever I call my start method, right, I need to get iPhone 7. So now what happens is whenever I try to create new in this scenario, I'll try to recreate again. I'll go here. So in my iPhone class, I have one more variable that is my iPhone. So a memory would get created for this as well iPhone right a memory would be getting created for this as well so now let me run right let me run this let's see the output yeah you can see the output iPhone now default in Java a class name should be given as public so now we have something known as public private and protected we call this as access modifiers in the coming videos we'll see what is an access mod modifier for this class you just understand if you want to create a class for an object you have to make sure you write the syntax public class the object name opening curly braces and the closing curly braces if the object is performing something you have to make sure that is implemented as a method so now iphone can ring i have done it as a method using open brace and the closing braces now to print something we have a default syntax that is system.out.println so we are using it now coming to the start class again we have a main method that gets executed whenever you whenever you run your program the java will be saying you know where the class has a main method and it tries to execute from that point of time right so now here we have an iphone class this iphone class whenever i try to use a new keyword the memory would get allocated so like this in my memory iphone gets some space now for this iphone what all i have for this iphone i have my method as well as a string variable so again for a string variable as well as a method you get the memory so now in order to access a method what we use we try to use this reference so now we try to use this reference phone and you want to call a method use a simple dot operator in the coming videos, we'll be seeing some of the advanced topics of Java, how to create a method, what is overloading, what is overriding. So please stay updated on our channel for more Java videos. If you're looking for Java jobs, please log on to www.freshesworld.com. Thank you.